All right, everybody, welcome once more to another webcast of Alexandra Mayer's Live. I'm sorry that I'm a little bit late tonight, but I had a little something I had to do before I came on. Now, um, what do I want to talk about tonight? Uh, tonight, I'm mainly going to focus on... something that's a big problem that I think social media, specifically Twitter, is going to have to do something about. This is going to be the last time that I ever even issue again, because at this stage, I'm going to have to take action and um, probably just start reporting some people and um, starting some petitions and writing some letters because it's a big problem it's out of control and children are being exposed to incredible danger and um unfortunately some of these children who i'm going to talk to you about tonight have parents who either out their children or parents who are too stupid to realize the danger that they're putting their own children in many cases in. And it could be also that the parents are just um, greedy jerks. I'm not really sure. And I actually want to name some names tonight, but I'm not. At least at this point, I'm not. Because some someone who... Uh, at first, I thought this particular person who contacted me today was just stupid, but considering some later responses, I see that she's evil. So, like I said, I, I, I'm not going to name any names today, but don't be surprised if some articles pop up elsewhere on the internet naming some names because enough's enough anyway for i guess i sound kind of cryptic i don't mean to but the topic of tonight is if you are an adult worker a sex worker a porn star or a cam girl do not tweet about your children on your Twitter account or whatever social media account you have, don't post about your children alongside adult content. It is sick. And it is endangering your children's safety, their reputation. It's tarnishing their internet footprint before they even get out the door. And um, it, it's just wrong. So don't do it. For some reason, a lot of porn stars especially think that it's just fine. And they're trying to normalize it. They think it's okay to um, not just post photos or videos of their children in one tweet and then on the same account post a nude photo of themselves not only do they seem to think it's okay but i think some porn stars actually i know considering this one in particular who had the nerve to say something to me um they've come to realize that posting their children alongside their adult content boosts sales. It's a sympathy card kind of thing. I think that a lot of female porn stars especially have come to realize that there's a lot of lonely guys out there who really wish that they were in a relationship and they feel like, Oh, you know, I feel like I'm this girl's far away boyfriend and, you know, I feel good about helping out her kid, but oh, 
it's so dangerous because you got a lot of guys out there who um the reason that they're drawn to these women who are showcasing their children and tweeting about their children is because they're secretly pedophiles yeah um you also have a lot of guys out there who um might have a proclivity for underage adult content and i'm not saying that some of these porn stars are doing this but when they're posting pictures of their kids alongside their adult content some of these guys they might get the impression hmm if i give this person enough money will she produce adult content of her minor i hope none of them are doing that but that's something that has been known to happen unfortunately um i've noticed that some of the porn stars they've pretty much implemented their own children who are minors into their online sort of reality show that's child exploitation if you got adult content on your social media and then you're still posting about i've seen porn stars posting their children's names locations schools some of everything about their ch their children on social media social media accounts that showcase adult content i think that that should be illegal i really do i think it needs to be illegal because it's child endangerment um And one of the reasons that it's so dangerous, not so much that the child might be attacked, assaulted, kidnapped, um, so many things could happen, but it's, well, well also I could say it's not really giving the chance to develop um, a reputation away from their parent who made a certain choice that that child when that child grows up that child might not might not agree with that choice and that child's gonna look back at their parent and be like uh how dare you utilize my image alongside your um pornography that you're producing of yourself mom or dad in some cases how you know that's an issue that could come up but here's the biggest danger and i really hadn't thought about this day um any porn star sex worker or adult worker who posts about their children on their social media to their fans or whoever's interested in that particular um, porn star, adult worker, sex worker, any of them who do that, they're opening the gate wide open, be blackmailed or extorted or both incredibly easily too. And I know a lot of you might be like, oh, but that's so horrible. What kind of person would do that? A lot of people would do it <laughs> you know um, I guess the reason that this theory of mine that could be easily impl implemented um, crossed my mind has to do with the webcast that I did yesterday in that uh, guy Donald Sion who popped in and was being incredibly insulting and threatening and crazy and everything you know uh, that website of his porn WikiLeaks that's a giant extortion racket. Giant extortion racket. Oh, Anthony came in. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm good, but let me finish this point real quick, and then you and I are going to catch up. Um, anyway, what I was saying is that Porn WikiLeaks is a big extortion racket. Only 
the, the, the tactics that he's been using to blackmail people has been more so, um, hey, I'm going to tell your family about the fact that you do porn, or hey, I'm going to tell your employer that you've done porn, or I'm going to tell uh, your neighbors, you, you know, your, just whoever. But the one thing that he's not threatened anyone with and I think the reason is because he has children himself. Never said, well, at least not to my knowledge. Well, you know, if you don't pay me or if you don't do what I tell you to do, then I'm going to inform your child that you do porn. And I know a lot of people would be like, oh, but what would that do? Telling a child, why, why would that be? such a such a big thing well to the parent be the most devastating thing in the world it would also um completely alter the course of that child's life it, it it could their mind one thing i noticed on this one porn star's um social media and this was the porn star who contacted me, who I definitely think is just an incredibly evil human being. I noticed that 2015, or maybe it was 2016, someone asked her, uh, hey, does your son, know, who I think was like maybe 11 at the time, does your son know that you work as an adult model? And she said, no. And someone else responded, oh, yeah, it's probably a few for him to know about that. But then the very next year, someone asked her a similar question. She said, oh, well, he, he does know as much as, you know, as much as what's age appropriate for him to know. And I thought to myself, wow, that was quick. Now, the same um, porn star, it seems has a little girl and she is she vehemently um exploits this little girl on her social media i mean oh, it's so sick when i really think about it I, I mean she is constantly i'd say almost on a daily basis talking about her daughter telling people what i would think people would want to keep as private details about her daughter but apparently she does and I, and I think I know why but uh, say that you're like a really evil guy and you think to yourself wow I really want to have a date with this particular porn star and you know you ask the girl out and she's like oh now I want to go out with you all a guy would really have to say is well okay if you don't go out with me, then I'm going to make sure your child finds out what exactly it is that you do for a living. And there's ways. I know there's some people who would be like, yeah, but how would you, how would you, you, you know, get to the child to even let them know what's what there's ways i actually had a discussion about this today with someone that i know and um he was even telling me ways that i never would have thought about on my own so it's very doable very very doable but um that's why you don't need to talk about your kids if you are an adult worker or sex worker or a porn star. No one should ever know that you have children. It's just too dangerous. Um, there's people out there who could, you, you know, and forget about just someone being like, well, I'm going to tell your kid what you do. What if they're like, well, if you don't do what I want you to do, then I'm going to hurt your kid that's a very very um 
that that would definitely be something that definitely see people doing that so again you know blackmail and extortion these are illegal things but in a world where it's happening on a daily basis um another warning i wanted to put out there for adult workers who have children and who are on social media is psychos out there who might try to blackmail you who are not attached to the adult industry but i personally think that there's a lot of people within the adult industry who actually prefer um working with sex workers or adult workers or porn stars who have children because that right there gives them leverage over the person i mean what's to what's to stop a uh okay let's say you're an independent girl right you're a mom you're on your social media you're talking about your kids and everything you've noticed that since you've been talking about your kids on your social media that you're actually starting to sell more cam shows and more products because you have a lot of guys who are like, oh, she's a single mom, I wanna help her out. You know, so you're like, yeah, let me talk about my kids more and more and more. Well, um, let's say that you're doing great independently, but let's say that there's a, uh, I don't know, adult industry publicist or something who starts observing that you're doing pretty well and is like, need some publicity you know want you hire me to be your pr guy and if you say no that person might take all those tweets that you've made children to get more attention and they might send those tweets to child protective services and be like hey this um adult worker or maybe they won't send them right away but they might threaten say hey you know you ha you know how you say you don't need any, any publicity well you know you might want to go ahead and sign up with me because i feel like um i i really want to work with you and maybe help you because it seems to me like you're having to uh use your children to promote yourself um in the adult world on social media publicly you know that that really doesn't look so good to the courts i'm concerned about this maybe i should send these tweets to child protective services i i mean if a publicist said that to you most likely you would pretty quickly uh go ahead and hire them on a monthly basis so you see what i'm saying here what i'm saying here is that you don't want to ever open that door to where you're linking children to the adult entertainment industry porn and kids do not mix at all and that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about tonight but let me go ahead and uh open up the lines hopefully we don't get anybody crazy if you want to come back in you can because I'm going to uh, put the thing in the Twitter, the link in, the, in my Twitter. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I mean, I it just amazes me every time I think that I can't see, I can't find anything that's like lower than what I've already witnessed entertainment industry that someone else takes it to a whole nother low it, it just astounds me it really astounds me it's like what would what would even be going through your head to where you think to yourself okay i'm gonna post new photos of myself and then right after that post a picture of five-year-old child working on their school project <laughs> it's like what 
I don't know. It, it's it, and then it makes me wonder. It's like you, you know, it, does that? Is it because she's thinking to herself, I want to normalize this so that the moment that my daughter turns 18, I can um, pull mother-daughter Desi Ellie Fox kind of thing? Because we, we all saw the nightmare that that was. <laughs> okay. I mean, even people with sense in the adult industry they were like you know that's that's going a bit far um and does it herself she she repented she was like yeah i took it too far but um see i'm thinking that you have some very very mentally ill very sick king in the adult industry now who are thinking you know they look at their daughters and they think to themselves well my shelf life is about up so let me go ahead and groom my daughter to be point oh i know that's not something that people like to think about but that's one of the first things that pops in my head when i see somebody trying to uh you know talk about their children especially a little girl on their social media that's supposed to be dedicated to their welcome back anthony how are you doing i'm fine i'm sorry power just went out and right now it's dark in my house so i can't okay. really you can't really see me right now and i apologize oh it's okay well i'm glad you popped in i know you wanted to pop in yesterday and you weren't able to but welcome back we haven't talked in a little bit but you can be at the be in the dark i don't blame you. you you know i deal with stalkers so that way they can't see you <laughs> so what do you think about this topic i was i was talking about tonight what do you think about adult stars who showcase their children alongside their naked photos do you think it's right do you think it's wrong what's your opinion on it i for me being the type of person that i am i don't like it i think what you do at what you do at work is work, what you do at home is home. Yeah. When you start joining the two, that's when trouble gets started. Yeah. I I, I think I what I don't like is that it, it like I kind of think to myself, what about when the kid becomes a teenager? You, you know, teenagers, they're all looking at the porn and everything because it's free. And, you know, he's got to go to school with his peers. And, you know, there's going to be that one kid that he goes to school with that's going to be like a porn fiend. And he's going to realize, oh, my God, this porn star I like to watch kid is in my class, <laughs> you know? And then there, he's going to go to school and talk about it. And then the kid ha develops a complex, is in, you know, becomes embarrassed and could grow up and become a psychopath because of this kind of a thing, you know? So, uh, I, and you're right. I think you do need to differentiate personal life from the work life, but that's why I think it's exploitation because I think a lot of times you got girls who happen to be mothers and they realize, oh, my income's going up the more I talk about my child. Crazy, I, I think it's really bad. And I think it's also kind of, especially if it's a daughter that they have, I think it's kind of, putting a scarlet letter on the daughter before she can even form who she is because um you got a lot of psycho agents out there who are always you know looking for the next how the fuck would you know you stupid nigger monkey oh, you can't no. Ask oh no he's back <laughs> he's back and you know what he does this he exploits his how own the fuck unborn would you child know about anybody's kids Oh my wow. God. Wow. Baron. Oh, we got a, uh, we got a remake of last that. night. You know what? It's, I'm actually glad he came in, and I'm going to tell you why. Because that is crazy about this crazy guy is that his wife is pregnant, 
and he's selling her online via the cam shows. So he's sexually exploiting his own pregnant wife. And being that he's acknowledging the pregnancy, he's already exploiting his own child on the internet before even mom's body. So, you know, I think that needs to be illegal. I, I think pregnancy porn should be illegal because I think it's a form of pedophilia. That's really it, what I think. He he has no life. His his whole life is to torture you. Well, he does really. have a life. His life should be his wife. <laughs> you know, that's what you would think. He he need what he needs to do first. <laughs> get a job. He need to get a job like yeah. That. And second of all, yeah. leave you alone. You have I you know. have been nothing but professional to him. I remember when he started following me on Twitter. I had to block him, and I think I told you about that situation. But it it just amazes me how this one person who doesn't live in America, who is married, got a kid on the way, mm-hmm. rather harass you and take care of your responsibility. Well, the situation's in the courts now. It's in the legal system, and every time he does do a pop-in or if he sends me a crazy email or a crazy tweet or whatever it is, it goes right on court record. So... Oh, he's there. You, you would think... It's, it's, oh, it's the wife this time. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that she's realized it, but she's going to be able to come to America because you know how you got to go through the immigration process and everything. Right. Um, you know, there's a file on her now. Oh. So that's, yeah, it's, and you, you don't want to do, you don't want to create a file on, you, you know, a young girl like that, but... She's obviously, you know, being that to come on here like this and talk to, you know, just do what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. It's not like she doesn't know. So, you know, but um, I, I hope, she, you know, I'm actually glad she's watching this webcast because um, maybe at some point, she'll realize, oh my gosh, I'm being, I'm not just being exploited, but my unborn child is being exploited. That's true. That is so true. So, you know. But what's going on with you? Tell me about you. What's been going on in your life? Let's not be all depressed and everything over yeah. here. <laughs> well, I've, myself, I've had a good summer. I've Went to Vegas, the bowling the bowling bowl tournament, had fun doing that. And pretty much has just been working and trying to enjoy life as much as I can. I've been on vacation from yeah. work this week and I gotta go back to work next week. So but I've kept up with you. I've read your um I read like Thank a you. lot what you put on not only on YouTube but also on Twitter, because I, I love you on Twitter. So you know, Thanks. and I've always said I love the opportunity to talk to you again because I had so much fun the last time we talked. Ah, oh, well, thanks, 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 thanks so much for keeping up with me and everything. And uh, y- you know, I really only have about three more, y- you know, major videos that I want to put out that are about you know issues. Like this one doesn't even count, but there's like three other major videos that I want to put out that have to do with adult entertainment industry issues. But then after that, I have a big surprise for people because I am moving completely away from the adult oh, world. And oh, uh, he's back you're a liar <laughs> and you're a piece of Hold shit. Hold on, let me you try to kill yourself. You know that. Oh. Just run walking high because oh. you're a coward. You're a fucking coward, you pussy ass bitch. Really? Okay, he's gone. He's gone. Oh. And hi, Adam. I see you. I see you, Adam. Thanks for coming in. 
but it's a comedic relief. But I am going to try to open the thing to where uh, he can't come back in. I think I can do that. Let's see if there's a. Uh, I know there's a way. Just give me one moment. But yeah, I have a big surprise for y'all. I, I definitely have a big surprise as far as something that I'm going to be doing later this year that's going to be available, um, I hope, for watch and everything. So that's cool. So are you like a professional bowler? Is, is that something or is it just kind of a hobby for you? It's, it's a hobby. It's nothing. I, uh, I I do leagues on during the during the winter time. Normally Wednesday nights and Saturday nights. And whenever okay. a, a, a tournament that interests me comes comes around, I'll go. And when mm -hmm. the group I'm with, which is the TNBA group, they decide to do Vegas this year. I said, "Well, let me go ahead and hey, go do Vegas." You need some type of protection. I behind that fucking block button. You big fucking coward. You're nothing but a fucking oh. sissy. That's all you can do is fucking hide. But I tell you what, when I do get there, you're gonna any. need to hide from my fucking That's lawyers in the court have. because I'm gonna sue you, father, your sister, oh. and your whole fucking failed hooker family. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bye. Yeah, you better fucking block. Hide behind that block button, you little. Uh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway, um, so but I, I just in, it's, it's really it's my release, and it's something that I've done for God almost fifteen years. So I've I've just that's my hobby. So okay, so it's one of those well, things. That's good. That, yeah. So, but how have you? How I like have you really. Been? How been really good. That's the thing. It's like it's it it's interesting to me you know, when the hate does appear because it's really good right now. Um, I have a pretty good schedule, you know, I have my regular job. I do my little activism. I'm really big into my art. I want to start, you know, sharing that on my social media a little bit more probably over the next month really into my music. That's kind of like my new super passion right now. But, you know, I'm just living. Very blessed to have family around me, small little social group that I like to run and get into trouble with. And uh, that's really, that's really it. I'm a lot calmer nowadays than I was a few years ago, which is nice. I like the age that I'm at right now. I like being 38. I have a feeling I'm going to really love 39 and I'm forward to my 40s. You don't you don't look 38. You you still look like you in your 20s. Well, you're sweet. Thanks. But I do. I I see it. I see it within myself. I think I look my when I was in my 20s, I looked so damn young, <laughs> like a damn teenager forever. I'm happy to be like, you know, yeah, this is, man. You, you know, the sad oh, part God. about it, I still get caught. I still get caught when I go to the liquor <laughs> store and I'm almost 50. Well, you know how it is. A, a big part of it is that, you know, we're so fortunate to have you know, the melanin in our skin, we don't age. It, we're, we're so lucky. I mean, you know, oh, you know, we should talk about, let's talk about Maxine Wal, uh, Maxine Waters. Uh oh, here we go again. Are you fucking joking? Yeah. That oh, like he's back. <laughs> how many, I swear, it's Nothing like how many yes, accounts yes, does yes, he yes, have? Yes, 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 she collects fucking welfare. She's wow. a crackhead, food stamp fucking oh. welfare nigger. That's all she is. I got a PI fucking following her. Three Gosh. of us are paying a PI to follow her. Well, I if that's true, could you imagine like um if that's true that three people to pay a PI? That makes me a very <laughs> valuable person. 
<laughs> but I thought he was, I thought he was supposed to be rich. Yeah, uh, yeah what well, that sound like to me? He was supposed to be rich to where money wasn't so he so he's paying money to um get this super expensive PI to where he had to recruit two other people to um help him pay for it. But then he's gotta pay for his attorneys too that are gonna file all these lawsuits, supposedly, right? Correct. So I mean, hey, if I'm costing him money. <laughs> get the win win for you. <laughs> yeah, but as we know, he's just full of it. He's not paying for anything and he's not doing anything. He's just this is his fun because I think that he's probably not able to communicate properly with his wife and he's probably stressed cuz you know, he's got his second child on the way and he might even be suicidal. Popping in here and these at us might be the one thing that's releasing his anger enough to where he put a gun to his head and blow his brains out. Oh, goodness. something to think about. That's a waste of a bullet. I think so too. But yeah, let's talk about Maxine um, Waters and her talking about reclaiming my pride. I like that, or not not my pride, <laughs> re reclaiming my time. But it was her pride too. It was. Yes. But it was her she, time because that guy was trying to, you know, take her on his little, and she wasn't having it. I was happy and, about that. And that's what they need to do more in Washington. I I know I was watching. I forgot mm -hmm. what state there was doing a town hall talking about the Affordable Care Act and why they're trying to repeal it. And a young lady got up about the age of 22 and she told this Republican senator, she said, look, she said, you don't work for the Republican Party. You work right. for us. Now, yeah. if you do what you're supposed to do, if, we, if everybody here tells you vote no, you need to vote no. Don't worry about what your Republicans say. Don't worry about what the president say. You worry about what we tell you. Because here's the rule. Uh oh. 623 Northwest 47 Terrace, Dear Phil Beach, Florida. 623 Northwest 47. But I thought Terrace, you had a PI. Why, why did you have to come in? That's when this stupid nigger's hiding in her mother's basement, drunk, libeling, stalking, and. <laughs> really dude get a life just get a life really just get a life that's all you got to do <laughs> he I, I don't think he can i i think i don't think he can you, you know oh my it's, um God. i just yeah i mean you know, this is like like the fifth time he done chimed in, <laughs> and he ain't got nothing better to do. But back no, to it's, I look, yeah. So back to what we were talking about. But no, I, I mean that they do need to do that a lot more in Washington. I yeah. I agree. I look, I can't believe the way the political climate is right now. It is insane. But I think it had to go there, mm -hmm. go there because until. But the one I, thing that. Until us as Americans say we gonna take back our country, our way. Hold hold on a second. Yes, I thought y'all was going. Uh oh. How about both you niggas get a fucking life and a job? Get off the welfare, off the food stamps. I don't think anyone here is on I'll welfare. Get empowered at blocking with the block button. <laughs> Grow some balls. <laughs> And stop being a fucking coward, because that's all. Oh, you know he he needs wow. to become a comedian full time. Oh. I I just I think that this are probably going to be like the last that we hear of him. I think it must be really bad. Whatever is going on in his life. I think it's got to be really, really bad. So, you know. So, but until, but until we as a society and as an internal group of Americans say, 
if I elect you, if I vote you into the White House, if I vote you into Senate, if I vote you in into the House of Rep, are you going to do what's best for me, or are you going to do what's best for your party? You're going to do what's best for your party. Guess what? Don't need you. Keep it going. Keep it moving. But until we get to that, yeah. to that as a country, this is this is the way our country is going to be ran. And, you, and the funny part about it, I was just thinking about it, the person that is smiling the most is our former president because he tried. That's what I was saying yesterday. That's exactly what I was saying yesterday. I think, you, you know, I think that he is just laughing. I think he is laughing because so many people who, you know, were so critical of him, they are like, oh, I wish he was back in office, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, but that's how it has to go sometimes. Mm -hmm. How you know, it has to be. Like I told somebody else, Hillary wasn't a saint. She really wasn't, but she Bill was fucked a her whole up. lot better. But she's a whole lot yeah, better. Yeah, well, you know, I think, I think Bill into. sabotaged her. I do not trust Bill. Mm -hmm. Bill, I think, did not want to be the first man. <laughs> I think he had a problem with that, and I think that um, he threw Hillary under the bus, and I still think, Hillary, it's not too late. You still can get rid of him. Mm -hmm. You still you can do it, Hillary. A long time ago. Yep. But I'm sorry. I, who, yeah. who else is down here? That's Alex? That's Adam. Adam. Hey, Adam. Adam's here. Sorry, we just taking up the whole conversation. Adam totally forgot about you. How you doing? I know. Bro? Adam. Adam. Come in. I don't think his wait is he is his volume on? I don't think his volume's on. Let me see some. Uh, Adam. Oh, you just muted him. Now he's muted. Okay, let me do it again. Well, he was already uh -oh. unmuted. Oh no. Six two three North Forty Seven Terrace, Dillon Beach, Florida. That's her mother's fucking oh. basement. She's hiding it. He must oh, be barring. No. He must be barring other hangouts. We're stalking you. I I think that he just has like a hundred accounts. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. All right. Okay, Adam. Adam. We can't hear you. Okay. We can't hear you, Adam. Let's see, did I? Is he oh, yeah, no. muted him. No, no, I, okay, I muted him again. All right, let me click this. All right, Adam, not letting me unmute him. Adam, <laughs> how do I un? How do I? How do you unmute the thing? Yeah, not go. letting me do it. There you go. You, he's open. It's just slow. okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I don't think his microphone's working. He doesn't have to talk. He might not want to talk today. <laughs> he just want to see your beautiful face. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what else? Let me think. Was there anything else? I always make notes every day about stuff I wanted to talk about. Where's my other thing? Maybe there's some. Some other note I made. When the, when the next time you go into the recording studio? Um, I have a session on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming okay. up. Okay. So one day I will learn that or something, and I probably need to bring like a hot spot. I'll bring a hot spot or something when I go, and that way maybe I could do like a little webcast and everything. I, w I don't want to. I, I really don't want to um, ID certain people I'm working with just yet. Mm -hmm. I want to wait until some of this court stuff is over with. Yeah. So uh, I'll wait on that. But, oh, you, well, you know what? Here's something that I'm going to um, start talking about soon. I think that there's something going on of Montana when it comes to extreme racism, um, extreme prejudice against 
people in the LGBT and extreme um, sexism. And the reason for that is this um, girl or woman who I her in forever, but um, her name is Crystal. And I was looking back at some old video blogs did, and I was comparing, and she was from the Montana area, and I was comparing what she was saying to um, that woman who was majorly trolled by that white supremacist, Andrew Anglin, yeah. and correlating details that they both told. So I, I kind of just want to do a webcast about that because I think women need to be aware, hey, maybe Montana isn't a good place for you to live. <laughs> and same if you're black and same if you're a part of the LGBT community. Because um, it's a really pretty place, but I'm thinking that maybe it's becoming like a hate crime hotbed. And with the president that we got in there trying to push out the transgenders out the military. Yeah. yeah we, that might be a good subject you might have to hit on. Because that was I think that was I funny. hope that they're not going to try to do another Holocaust. Because I, I, I kind of am worried about that. I'm starting to think that there might be another Holocaust. And I think it's I think they're going to target the, L, the LGBT people. I, I don't think it's going to be a Holocaust. But what they're going to do... They're going to do them like they did us. They're going to try to take everything. Uh-oh. Here we go. Um, 623 yeah. Northwest, 47 Terrace, Deerfield Beach, Florida. That's where this she stupid nigga is so there stalking and libeling people. Hiding I in think her he's reading a script. There's a dress where yeah. she's hiding. That's about the third time you're going to say that. I know. Maybe it's a recording. <laughs> Maybe he just, ha you know, he made a recording on his computer and he's just like, you know, typing buttons and he's like, Shh, I got to do this. Shh, gonna make another Google account. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He, he, oh. is, he is funny, you know, and you, and you don't say, and I say that loosely because it's sad that. It is. You, you could be doing well, it's annoying. In the world. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's everything in the world, but but annoy you, you know. Oh, but when <laughs> when Trump <laughs> put that tweet out that night and said what he said, and the I next morning I woke it. up, I flew, I was floored. I was like, he just said what? And it's funny, you know, it's bad when the people when the other people around you are like, I got nothing to do with that. Um, mm -hmm. don't, don't, I that was his opinion, not mine. Well, he's, he's the, it's like he's married to a woman who is from another country, right? And Correct. then he's going to have the nerve to talk about immigration. Right. Oh, it's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, so, 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 so. He's crazy. <laughs> Oh, a new person, another person. That's Adam. Yeah, yes. yeah. My, I'm on my phone. Oh, we have two. Hey, I'm going to do, well, I'll just leave the other one also. All right, yeah, because we couldn't hear you on the other thing. So now he's on the cell phone too. That's smart. Okay. How you doing, sir? Welcome, Adam. Doing good, and how about you? I'm doing well. How about you, you tonight? Doing? I'm doing great. Doing Getting ready great. to go to bed real soon. <laughs> All right. Oh, so oh, what's new with you, Adam? Just, just. Well, get, I might go to bed soon gonna, too. I'm, I'm gonna try to go see the movie. <laughs> go see the movie. I think. See the movie Girls, Girls Trip, with Queen Latifah. Cool. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Hey, um. You know what a good movie is that's on Amazon Prime? Knowing. I watched that last night. Awesome, awesome movie. There uh -oh. is a plane crash scene in that movie that hey, is look, like some of the best CGI like I a ever saw. Ivan Mayers. It's a homosexual, a mentally ill, sick homosexual. Just like your father. You shouldn't have been born, you dumb fucking monkey. 
<gasps> Come on, Bach. Hi, run. He always Both says the same thing are, over and over. Both of you motherfuckers are going to be doxxed on porn WikiLeaks. Photos are being taken right oh, now, no. and your IPs are being traced. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, if you if if you if you really did any of the stuff that he said right now, I think you probably been in jail. He's um my mom's he can't reestablish himself in America. Mm -hmm. He cannot do that. Thanks. All right, because if he does, then right away he loses everything. But he's frustrated. I think he's running out of money and he's been humiliated. He's lost a lot of you know, momentum and people who initially were afraid of him now are not afraid of him. So he's just doing whatever he can do, I think, because he knows that this is like the end. Oh, wow. I, he, so. He's so stupid. I mean, he just, to me, he's just funny. He is just funny. Yeah. He's just. And, yeah, it's but just old you now. Can, but knowing, I, okay, I might have looked it up on Amazon Prime. Yeah, knowing Nicolas Cage is in it, it's a really good movie. I wanted to watch it for a long time, so I watched it, and it was good. But you know what I'm watching now? Um, uh -oh. This you're series. You go. Liar. Everything you say are lies. series you called Mr. Robot. And that right is a now, really good a series that I think. And when I get to Florida, my lawyers are coming after you. All three of you little punks. Okay, he's out. But yeah, check out that series, Mr. Robot. Mr. Mr. Robot. Robot. I'll, yeah, I'll see, yeah. I've seen beats and beats of it. It's good. It's real good. Um, the guy, I, I like. Go ahead. The main character, he's a really good actor. Yeah. And um, yeah. My favorite one right now has been, has been Shooter. And I've liked Shooter? That. What's Shooter about? Yeah. Uh, it's about, if you ever saw the movie, it's about a famous sniper vet who first was framed, last season he was framed for shooting, was allegedly supposed to have been assassinating the president, but allegedly a, a team had killed the archbishop and he had to get himself free. Now there's a sniper, oh. there's a professional sniper group going after his old sniper team. So now he he and the sniper team has to get together and figure out why they're trying to kill them all. So it's it's been very interesting. And it sounds interesting. One, one one of the better ones I've seen. I like. I'm not into reality TV. I'm not uh, into. This I, I can't watch any reality TV really either, except for um like nature shows. Mm -hmm. I do like the nature shows sometimes. Not all the time. Oh, and the space. Anything having to do with um, astronomy. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like that. I, I like when they um, have, like, the journey through the universe. Like Star Trek. Yeah, like Star Trek. Oh, I love Star Trek. Yeah, well, y'all know that. I'm, I'm, watching it. such... I'm watching it right now on BBC yeah. America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Which which series? Which which one? Generations or the original Voyager? I'm watching the one right now. Season 3, Episode 6, Spectre, Spectre of the Gun. Is it Star Trek Voyager or, or Generations? Or Gen which, do you know which... I like I like them all. generation. Yes, all of it. Okay, cool. I, I I really was impressed with Star Trek Voyager. Um, the storytelling in that one was just amazing. I, I really fell in love with the Captain Janeway character because I didn't anticipate that character to be so deep and complex, but mm -hmm. you now once I get through the uh, Mister Robot back and rewatch Voyager all over again because I kind of miss watching Star Trek Voyager because I mean I, I got so into it and like if you you know binge watch it, it takes you a few weeks to get through all the episodes but 
it's, it's a fun vibe it creates. And my favorite episode of the Voyager is learning because it's it's when Tuvok takes some takes some to 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 do the climbing the ladder and and do a little exercise running. My favorite episode is Learning Curve. A Voyager. Learning Curve. Yes. Okay. Watch that one then. Just I might watch it tonight. I might watch my, it tonight. My favorite series, and a lot of people think I'm crazy, but it makes you think. Burn Notes. I love Burn Notes. I haven't Burn seen that one. What, what's that about? That's about I gotta a go spy. To, that that is burned go to, by. I'm going to go to bed okay. sooner. All right. When well, are you going to be back well, on the air? Night. When are you going to be I'll back? I'll be back or? on Friday. I'll be back next Friday. Talk to you then. Okay, bye, Adam. Good Have night. Good Sweet dreams. Bye, Adam. Good night. See you. Bye. So, All right, but okay, so tell me but, about what that's about again. Burn Notice is about a spy that was burnt by his own. He, in other words, he was an undercover spy, and come to find out, he was getting blackmailed, and he had to go through all these systems inside the government that screwed him. Till he finally got to the people that screwed him. Wow! And how he had to get back in. Uh oh. Hmm. Classic. You got a Down syndrome homosexual fucking nigger. That is your fan base. Oh That's the extent oh of your God. fan base. A bunch of fucking sickos like your father. And He's homosexual. A bad you person. Been born. Really bad person. He, he just all right. He, He's gone. He need a good butt whoop, and that's all. And when I say a good one, <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean with the belt. <laughs> just to leave you alone, really. Life has a funny way of things happening, so <laughs> I'm 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 not wishing any bad anybody, blood. but you know, <laughs> random things just happen. So right. that's why I'm not so worried about it. But, but he, yeah, but what, what other series have I been watching lately? Um, oh. You might want to check out something called The Conspiracy Show. That's on Amazon Prime, too. I've just been, like, really exploring stuff on Amazon Prime on their little video thing. But The Conspiracy Show, that's a... If you just kind of want it, like, a, like an introduction to conspiracy theory that there's ever been, watch that show. It's yeah. good. And, they have all and three when it comes to politics, there. I've been a big fan of Bill Maher, so I watch his show on HBO real time. Okay, he brings in some honest people, and they when they talk about what goes on in the government, what's going on, they're opinionated views. But if you sit back and think about it, you'd be like, "Hmm, that makes a lot of sense." Now, there's some that are off the wall, which is true, but when you but when they really start talking nuts and bolts, yeah, you sit back there like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Why? So that's been one of my favorite shows. They normally comes out every Friday at ten, but I'd rather talk to you. I could always watch that later. <laughs> Thanks. But um, I don't know with with the whole political thing. I I'm getting so I'm getting so just tired of. I mean, it's like every week something crazier happens crazy is it gonna get like what else what else could trump possibly even do now oh, like i feel like i'm gonna turn on cnn and it's just and it's like the headline's gonna be trump's decided to legal again <laughs> 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 He's bringing him back. You, you know, I mean, that's that, that's kind of. Uh, you, you I, know, I don't know. You, you know, your country's in sham when the political party that's in charge of the government is having problems. That tells you where our country is going right now. If I, when, you when know, the, when the, the one, the, the two years the Democrats had the House and the Senate. We got a lot of things pushed through. A lot of things made the country better. But we did it. They did it as a team. It wasn't Obama said this. We did that. It was like it, 
This is what a mama wanted. This is what y'all passed. Boom. Here you go. I feel like there is going to be a way for them to um, be able to get him out of there. But see, here's what's really um, kind of really everything's on purpose. But I, I, I kind of feel like maybe allowed this to happen because it's going to put Mitt Romney in there. And a lot of people were really on the fence about Romney. But this Trump crap, Romney's looking really good to just about <laughs> everybody. So, you know, I really do think that the whole thing was like a big sham. I, I don't think that, um, I, I, I think the powers that be decided, okay, we got to make Romney seem more likable. So let's just put in like the worst case scenario <laughs> and then we'll bring him in. Okay. Seems like the, to me, I, I I agree, cause there's I, you. You can't get no worse than what you have right now. But no, you, you can't. I, I mean, <laughs> but, I mean you, maybe but, maybe there's a way for it to be right. worse. I I I I try to think about. I'm like, what else could he possibly do? But what you expect is when you have a Republican House, a Republican Congress, and a Republican President. All, you should not have any problem passing any of the laws and the rules that you want. Uh-oh. Fucking nigger. Uh, you're, you have no fucking brain in your head. You collect welfare. You're a fucking drunk loser. You're 40 years old and you live in your mother's basement. What the fuck does that say about yourself? Living that in you mama. Okay? <laughs> that you doing okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, see, here's the thing. This is this is what's funny. Like, if anything he was saying was meant to have any sort of uh, it, wouldn't he be aware that in the state of Florida, the water table's so high that there are no basements? <laughs> it's like, you know, and he's supposed, you know, it's crazy. That's why I think his whole story is fake. His, like, you know, backstory and everything. He is supposed to be from South Florida, you know, mm -hmm. but really is. I think that that's just a story that he made up. I, you know, he's probably not even really American because if you listen to his uh, dialect and everything, mm -hmm. I don't think he really grew up in America at all. Mm -hmm. But, in South Florida, <laughs> they can't. You you can't have a basement right. in South Florida because the, the the water table is really high. So, right. you know, <sighs> yeah. Okay, but back to what I was saying. You know, that's the problem. I think we have there is when your people, when your house people can't get on the same page, your senators can't get on the same page. Then you got a psycho president by the name of Trump trying to trying to stir all this up. You're gonna have he is he's like a Twitter troll in real in real life. That is what Trump is. I think he, he's like a troll who somehow became president. It's weird. Um and it's weird that he's always tweeting too. You know, Obama tweeted, but you never heard Obama tweet the way he tweets. If Obama had a problem, he would he would say, "I passed. Well, he was professional. I tried to pass this bill, but they stopped it. It would be some simple, nothing." Well, you know, there was this um, there was this panel of a uh, psychiatrist or psychologist from Yale. There was a whole uh, article about it recently, and they were saying that just from observing Trump, by what his mental illnesses are, I think he is. A, he is mentally ill to a degree. I, I don't think that he's fit to be president. And I think that his Twitter is a good indicator of all that. <laughs> and, you, you know, if anything, whole Trump fiasco concludes, at least uh, is becoming familiar with the, with the symptoms and the signs of mental illness. And when you really look at the people who are like diehard Trump fans, 
if you really look at them, oftentimes many of them are mentally ill, obviously too. And I'm not saying that in a mean way, but yeah, I, I, I think that maybe um, this is a way to identify. Maybe Trump is meant to be a way to identify people with certain mental illnesses because they're attracted to that. And what if it turns out that he's acting? What if he's acting? You can't act that bad. You can't act that bad. You can't act that bad. No matter. You just can't. I'm sorry. What do you think about the whole Melania thing? Um, how do you think that she even puts up with him? I don't think that she... I'll be honest with you. I think while she's there, she just goes into... She goes into the White House. She goes up to her room. And minds her own business. Because you don't see her. If she's not like Michelle. Michelle was out. Michelle had plans. Michelle did I that. think Michelle was the president. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think I, I mean I felt like she was extremely um first lady. She they were like co-presidents. It was not just Barack. It was mm -hmm. like you, you yeah, know, it, the, Michelle basically was president. And the funny part about it is they took a poll after the press after the, everything went down with the presidency and they was like who would you want as a Democrat? Who would you want to run for president? 64% of Democratic Americans said Michelle Obama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With, with it. And, but she's already said, uh, no. She likes being a mom. She likes doing the things that she does. She said her going into Congress, Senate, White House. You know who I think is going to run for president one day? Who's that? Their eldest daughter. Their eldest I daughter. So. I think oh. so, too. I think so, I think so. so. I think that's actually part of the reason that Michelle is not running. Mm -hmm. Because Michelle would have won. If she'd mm -hmm. run, she would have won. But I think the plan is Malia in there in mm -hmm. time. And I think... it affected Malia's presidency if her both her parents had been president, you know. It'd have been a little bit hard. That, that might have been an overkill. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know why that why I think that, but I just I, I feel like she's the one that um I don't I don't know why I think it. I well it's a few reasons why, but I just I think that's plan. I could I could totally see that happening. Um, one person who I'm I'm worried about tr who who might try to run for president, and I'm just hoping she doesn't. Trump's uh, daughter, uh, Ivanka. If if they they're trying to push that idea, and I really yeah. hope that that should not fly. Um, and it's not it really anything against her. Um, it, it's not that I dislike her. It's just that she's not qualified. Yeah. And, and she's not. Um, and it doesn't. She's, it doesn't, she's it not, really doesn't help you. It, it'd be different if you weren't in the White House. You was out doing your own thing while dad doing this. But you were still studying, knowing it. And then. You know what mistakes to make and what mistakes not to make, but you being part of his entourage all the time. Well, it's because that. Melania, I don't think, wants to do it. So it's kind of like he's trying to switch out um, Melania for his daughter, which is very creepy in a lot of ways, also. Um, but I think that's what it is. Also, uh, he knows that a lot of guys just like looking at her because she does have a very pretty face. She has an extremely like, pretty, face. pretty face. She does. She, she actually is. kind of soft the crazy that he is <laughs> because <laughs> Melania kind of adds to the crazy that he is. But um, Ivanka seems, at least on the surface, more normal. But you know. 
think I just lost She's not normal. She's, she's really not normal. And if you notice that it's like they try to keep his sons hidden because they're yeah. really not normal. Especially that one, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> he looks like a... <laughs> oh, they, oh. They, are so, they are so unique. Oh, gosh. Yeah, they're... Um... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you, you know, the, the oldest son, you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of that character from um, a movie we were talking about last night, American Psycho. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like, that's like how he is or something. That's what I, that's what um, Donald Trump Jr. reminds me of. Cause, Cause it's like, why is he always got his hair slicked back? Like wh wh when did that look come back? Is he still in the nineties? Cause he, he <laughs> It's like he's trying, like, does his father force him to try to, you, you know, just like how he did when he was in the 90s? Is he like, Trump Jr., if you want your inheritance, you better put all that gel in your hair and look like American Psycho or else. Oh, he's probably like, okay, dad. And then Eric's probably like, yeah, what about me? And he's like, no, you're ugly. Stay in the background. Quick, oh, bring Ivanka no. out. It makes us look pretty. No. Ivanka, do some modeling. Quick, sit in my lap. No one's going <laughs> to... <that's what> <laughs> She's probably like, Dad, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Those Trumps. I mean, it's like a reality show. You know... Oh. Well, you know, okay, okay. Being that we're dealing with the Trumps, you know who might try to run for president? One of the damn Kardashians. Oh no! Please don't. I bet one's. Please gonna, don't. Who do you, which one do you think would try? Which which, which oh. one? You Bobby know who Chloe. I think is going to try? Mom, Chris. Mom. Not mom. <laughs> I think no, I think no. Chris Jenner or oh, Kardashian oh, oh, or whoever she wants to be. Oh, Caitlyn Jenner? Oh no, please don't. <laughs> what if Caitlyn? Please don't. Hmm. If Wouldn't you that say be mom, wild? That that would be that would be very interesting. If you just said mom, but what if Caitlyn? Kate... No, I Caitlyn was saying Jenner. the mom, Chris, Chris, Chris. Yeah, I, Chris, could, see, I, thought... I could see her because she. She uh, you know, I think that. it's going to be Caitlyn. I think Caitlyn is going to be the one who tries to run for president. <laughs> I see more mom than Caitlyn. I think Caitlyn is happy in his skin right now. But I can see because mom looked crazy attention so much. I can see her going for the White House. I really can. I, I, I could too. I could too. That I mean... That would be what? What do you think she would? Do you think she would run as a Democrat or a Republican most or Libertarian? Likely, most likely, most likely a Republican. You know, crazy people do crazy things, so get with the crazy group. Maybe, maybe, but no, I I wouldn't be surprised if Caitlyn tried to run for president. <laughs> I, that's what I can't see. I really can't. I could, and the reason is because we're already becoming accustomed to the look that Caitlyn has because of Melania. Those two mm. are doppelgangers, and you know it. <laughs> you know it. I don't know if Caitlyn is trying to, trying to look like Melania or if Melania is trying to look like Caitlyn. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> mm -mm. I know one time you said you were thinking about running for president. Is that still Oh, I am. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> You got my vote. Look, with all this crazy stuff happening, I think that um, very feasibly, Ryan. I mean, we have. <laughs> why not? I mean, every, who do you think is going to be the next president? Who do you think is going to try to run for uh, 2020? If the Democrats were smart, I would get maybe. I would say Cory Booker, but no. They need to get somebody 
if I if I was running the show, I would still put Bernie Sanders. Someone who's definitely going to win no matter what. Yeah. I, I mean, who right. would definitely win? It. Mm. If you're I'm looking for sure. if you're looking for experience, you either got to go Bernie Sanders or the governor out there, in California. I think those are the two. If you want elder experience, that would be the two that I would lean towards. If you're looking for someone young and brash, ugh, I just don't see anybody young and brash in the Democrats that, you know, catches my eye and say, hey, you know, it wasn't like Barack. Barack caught my eye. Yeah. And once he caught my eye, that made me go with him. I just don't see a young Democrat, male or female, that catches my eye and makes me want to say, I want to vote for that person. I voted for Bernie Sanders. I'm, I'm not ashamed to tell anybody that. I voted for him out because I like his idea. He thinks outside the box. And in a country right now that is evolving at the rate we are evolving, mm. we have to go outside the box. Hmm. We have to think outside the box. If you don't think outside the box, that's the reason why Japan, China, and all these other industrial countries are well ahead of us in certain things, in certain things that we should be we should be leading. Because they thought outside the box. America has to start thinking outside the box in order to catch up. So Bernie Sanders would be my choice. If you really want to get the country back on its feet, I like what the, the governor out of California did. When unfortunately Arnold Schwarzenegger was there, they were they were in big time deficit, big time holes, couldn't get some things done. He goes in, couple of changes, states start making money, now it has a surplus. Hmm. And that's that's just the way you have to think. You have to think you, you if you if if the country's number one. You want to bring somebody that's going to make sure that the country grows, makes money, grows, get the infrastructure done. And I think a lot of people would kind of gravitate towards that person. If you're going um, outside the box thinking, universal health care for all, stuff like that, Bernie Sanders. And even, even though they're both up in age, Bernie's closing in on 80, the other guy's about 76. I still rather have them in office because right now, when I look at the Democrats, and I, I, you, I, you, at, you the you age is, isn't even a factor for me. I mean, I, I actually prefer to have an older president okay. for our next president. I would definitely. Uh, I, I'm not a big Bernie Sanders fan, but considering everything that's happened, he is looking. <laughs> um, but I'm not a big fan. I definitely am hoping that um, Hillary does it, not it, try it, again. It, it, because if she does, it's, yeah. if, it's if gonna you look at the governor out. of California, Jay Brown, and look what he's done as the governor there, you, you he might make you kind of like, hmm, you know, I had to get him in office. But we we got to start getting. But what we need, to, like I like I told one of my coworkers, what we have to focus on right now is 2018. You got all the all those house seats that get ready to come up. You got about 10 um Senate seats get ready to come up. We need to start getting some of these folks out of there because in order for us to get the White House yeah. again, they got to get out of there. So we and again, we ain't got to get big. We don't have to get big numbers if. Because they only hold the House by 10. They only hold the Senate by 7 and the House by 12. We can get those seats. Because what's going to happen when when the Democrats take back over the House and the Senate? You got a land up president. They can't do nothing. They gonna, it's going to be exactly. just like when Obama was up there. Say, hey, Obama Jr., you, got, you had two years where you're lamed up. And like I told a lot of folks, Obama did his job. Then the last two years, he said, "I'm gonna let them run this country into the ground." And that's what he started, and he let that he let that process go through. And it's and it's even um, though the job market is they saying is going up, but it has slowed. 
And, you know, like I told somebody else, I said, you never had a president come in in his first year, in his first year in office, have the job growth that we had. You know, everybody like, well, the Dow is at 22. I said, we still feeding off Obama. You won't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. to Trump till after next year. That's when you're going to know what's going on. Because if they can't get yeah. their stuff together now, watch how quick that Dow will go from 22 back down to 15. Yeah. Watch how quick well, I mean, the sudden- fact that he's already trying to blame the previous administration for things that are already starting to kind of, you know, come to the surface you know, because of him, that's how, you know, I think it's going to get really, really, really bad for a lot of people, but, um, we got to pray. I mean, that's what we have to do because it's, 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 um, I, I feel like what Trump has done, I, I think he, he basically promised everybody everything under the sun in order to get in there. Mm-hmm. And now he cannot deliver. But mm-hmm. on that note, I'm going to log out because I'm a little bit sleepy, too. But, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I couldn't, you can really see my face. I, well, no, I hope you come back because you know a lot about politics, and this was a really mm-hmm. good conversation. I mean, th- the way that you explained a lot of things, I bet you really enlightened a lot of people who might be mm-hmm. listening and watching. So we're going to talk about politics again, I guess, next Friday. But yeah, we'll, it'll, good night. Be, it'll be a date. All right. Good seeing you again. Good seeing you too. And good night, everybody. See you later. Good night. Ta-ta.